Let's take a quick look at an unusual subject, underwear and socks. Let's discuss the pros and cons of various fabric types and what kind you should wear for different types of adventures. So the other day my daughter told me that her feet were freezing. I asked her what kind of socks she had on under her boots. She said that she was just wearing normal cotton socks. I totally freaked out. I gave her a 10 minute lecture on the evil of cotton socks and I told her how important it is for her to wear synthetic or wool socks, especially when it's winter time. Thankfully, since then I've calmed down, but I want to teach you what I know about wearing different types of socks and underwear. Let's start off by talking about materials. Let's oversimplify. Cotton is natural. It's comfortable. It's breathable. Yes, it catches on fire, but if it's woven tightly, it burns at a consistently slow rate. If cotton gets wet, it absorbs a lot of water, and when it's wet, it does not insulate at all. On a good note, cotton does not hold a lot of odor. This is why you can wear a cotton shirt to the gym a million times and it always smells neutral again after you wash it. But if left to itself, cotton takes a long time to dry. My recommendation is to wear cotton socks and underwear to bed when you're safe and sound at home. Never wear cotton underwear or t-shirts when you think you're going to sweat or if it's going to rain. And never wear cotton socks, period. Let's move on to wool. Unless wool is woven very tightly, it also is breathable. The problem is that some wools can be scratchy, so if you buy something wool, you need to buy quality. Technically, wool does burn, but the tighter the weave, the more slowly it burns. I would say that wool is burn resistant. This is why a lot of fire blankets are made out of wool. Wool does absorb water, but it doesn't absorb nearly as much water as cotton. But even if it is wet, wool keeps its form and it continues to insulate. This is why wool was the go-to cold weather fabric for thousands of years. Wool smells bad when burning, but it washes well and it doesn't retain any stinkiness. Wool dries much more quickly than cotton. My recommendation is for you to wear wool when you need insulation in the wet. Wear wool when you need something fire resistant. Let's move on to polyester. Polyester comes in tight weaves and loose weaves. A tight weave might be something that you'll see in a nylon jacket like in this photo. A loose weave might be in a breathable workout shirt. But since this video is about underwear and socks, let me simplify by saying that synthetic underwear and socks are breathable. The problem is that they catch fire easily and they melt away dangerously quickly. Some military polyesters are chemically treated to become fire resistant. These are items like Nomex flight gloves and the Nomex flight suit. I'm not 100% positive, but I don't think that they have Nomex chonies or underwear. Polyester absorbs little or no water. So if you wear it next to your skin, it usually wicks away the water from your skin. Besides being flammable, another problem with polyester is that it can get stinky. If you're a stinky person by nature, then you need to wash your workout clothes after every single use and you need to use a healthy amount of deodorant before you work out. Polyester dries really fast. I love polyester clothes for working out and for blending with my socks. Some athletic boxer shorts and a wick away shirt are the best way to stay dry and comfortable during a hard workout. Let's move on to socks. As I said earlier, you can wear cotton socks to bed if you're in the safety of your own home and if you are not expecting any emergencies. But as soon as you leave your door, you better be wearing wool or a wool poly blend. If you wear cotton socks during military training or for a rainy day when you need to do some hiking, you are absolutely going to regret it. When I was a Boy Scout, it was standard to wear a polypropylene undersock, a thick wool hiking sock, and then your hiking boots. The thought process was that the tightly fitting polypro undersock would fit snugly to your foot. The undersock would rub and slide against the wool sock so your skin wouldn't have to. The wool would absorb sweat and your polypro undersock would wick away water so that your feet would stay dry. This was an okay system, but not the system that I recommend or use. When I went to Special Forces Selection in Ranger School, we were only allowed to wear army-issued wool socks. 
ever since then, that's all I wear. Once you toughen up your feet and break in your boots, there shouldn't be hot spots or sliding. Wool feels great against your feet. Wool is not flammable, and wool will keep your feet insulated and warm even if your socks are soaking wet. When you have a break or it stops raining, simply put on some dry wool socks. Throw your wet ones onto the top of your rucksack or your backpack to air dry them, and then move out. To be honest, my favorite socks are smart wool. They are at a higher price point, but their quality is first rate. I wore their PhD outdoor wool socks every day for the last 10 years I was on active duty. And now that I wear dress clothes, I like to wear their diamond gyms. My workout socks are a blend of wool, nylon, and elastane. Cotton is absolutely forbidden. Let's move on to underwear. And this goes for men and women. I want to make it clear that I don't want to talk about the merits of speedos, or tidy whities or g-strings, or boxers, or briefs. Comfort and fit is up to you. But like socks, cotton underwear is comfortable for sleeping. But as soon as it gets wet, it stays wet. This goes for sweaty underwear, or underwear wet from the rain. If you are going to work out, then you need to wear something that wicks away. Military underwear comes in all shapes and colors. There are very few wool underwear options, so I simply recommend that you wear polyester. What I actually recommend is that you wear a variation of a breathable and wick away polyester with some spandex or lycra. I don't want to be graphic, but I didn't wear underwear for the first 10 years of my career. Let's call this going commando. Underwear technology back then was terrible and cotton boxers or boxer briefs were basically all that was available. It was better to go commando than to suffer through cotton underwear in the field. As underwear technology got better, I moved on to healthier and more comfortable options. A day in the office might be a great day for silk-like polyester boxers. A hard day of training usually requires wick-away workout boxer briefs. Ladies, choosing the right bra requires the same thought process. If you're going to be in a safe and dry environment, then wear whatever kind of bra you want to. Cotton, silk, polyester, it doesn't make a difference, so be comfortable and feel good. But if you're going to be in the rain or you're going to sweat, then wear a bra that wicks away and lets your skin breathe. Let's now move on to extreme cold weather. The same rules apply. Cotton is always forbidden. The military issues out a silk-like polypro long underwear set. They call this lightweight cold weather undergarments. The middleweight is also made of polypro, but is a bit thicker. When I was on a team, I had a variation of these mid-weight polypros. I took them to the local seamstress and had a Velcro strip sewn along the outside of both legs. You could put them on or rip them off in a matter of seconds. We called them breakaway jakes. I'm convinced that I never would have survived my time in the army had it not been for my breakaway jakes. The military also issues this thick fleece jacket as the final layer in their standard warmth management system. I want to caveat and say that if you're going to fly on a helicopter or an airplane where you have a greater than average chance of catching on fire, then it might be advisable for you not to wear flammable polyester and replace it with wool or cotton. Better to be wet and squishy than to have your underwear melt to your skin. When I was in the second of the 5-0 deuce in the 101st Airborne Division as a lieutenant, the Army just came out with the Gore-Tex rain jacket and the Gore-Tex cold weather jacket but we were not allowed to wear them. It was unmacho and absolutely unacceptable to wear your Gore-Tex. You might think that I'm joking, but I'm not. We literally could not wear our Gore-Tex issued rain jackets. We could wear five layers of polypro underneath our uniform, but heaven forbid anyone catches you wearing a Gore-Tex jacket. Because of this, I spent a lot of time wet and cold. When I started my special forces training, it only got worse. I learned early on that cotton is evil. Poly Pro wicks away and wool keeps you warm, even if it's wet. So whether you're preparing for a career in special operations or you're going for a hike and it might possibly rain, you need to make good decisions about what you wear. Never forget that there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. Being smart about your underwear and socks probably isn't gonna prevent you from accomplishing your mission but it's going to make a huge difference in your level of comfort. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to learn more and to forward to a friend who needs to see this.
Life is a special operation. Are you dressed for it?